Hello everyone and welcome to TSAM. My name is Anna and today joining us is Jeff Shortis, Alpha Data Platform Product Owner at Charles River Development, a State Street company. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, thank you, Anna. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, Jeff Shortis, I'm the product owner of the Alpha Data Platform at State Street. Um, basically, the product owner role means that I'm responsible for you know, the business of the Alpha Data platform for um, the um, um, successful delivery of the product um, to our clients and for, um, you know, defining and, and, and executing on um, the, the overall business strategy for um, the Alpha Data platform. Um, my background um, might be useful just so you can understand the lens that I, um, or perspective that I bring to the table here. Um, I was, I've spent my entire career within the investment uh, data management industry, um, starting early days with, you know, a large commercial uh, data warehousing uh, platform and leading um, components of that. I was one of the um, early chief data officers um, in the industry when I was global chief data officer for um, uh, a um, large asset manager um, called Pioneer Investments. And, you know, that was back in 2008, kind of before, you know, um, you know chief data officers and, and data governance were really topical um, in this industry. Um, I founded a data governance company uh, that was called Data360, which was sold um, in 2017 um, to a company called Infojix. Um, and I mentioned those things so that really um, you all understand the perspective that I'm bringing to the table here. I have been both a vendor and a client. Um, I have great empathy for the needs of um, data consumers and uh, a you know sort of experiential understanding of the problems that asset managers face. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff, for the intro. Um, so to kick things off, uh, can you tell us what data management challenges do investment firms face? Yeah, I would say overall, investment managers, uh, the biggest problem is th th they face a lot of complexity, right? And, and, and that complexity comes from different dimensions. Um, if you kind of start at the top, um, they need to um, gather a lot of data, right? They need to assemble a lot of data. And in order to do that, they need to um, um, participate or, or, or manage uh, a complex ecosystem where there's sort of many providers that are either consumers of data or providers of data or both consumers and providers of data. And to do that at scale um, is, is, is a real challenge for um, the investment management industry. And, and, and each company basically has had to figure this out for themselves. So if you think of this problem multiplied times every firm that needs to manage, you know, uh, an ecosystem between market data providers, analytic providers, internal systems, very, very, very complex, right? So just gathering the data is a big problem for them. Um, second problem is validating the quality of that data, making sure that that information is available in a timely basis. Um, and so there's, you know, functional capabilities that need to be managed in that zone, uh, uh, data mastering type capabilities, data quality ca type capabilities, but there's also very technical capabilities ensuring, you know, the speed of the management and the delivery of that data. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of um, very special um, um, SME type resources needed, again, at every single company to do those things. Um, and that's a big problem. And then really the third area that's a, a tremendous problem is, well, okay, now I have all this data and I've done some things to make it available. How do I efficiently deliver that data to my data consumers? And there's really two aspects of that. You know, first thing is, how do I even communicate that to them what data is available and how it should be used? So this kind of, this this zone has come to be known as data governance, really kind of evolved over the last, you know, 
you know, seven, uh, seven to 10 years. Um, but most firms still struggle just in that space. And then the second big problem is more of a technical challenge. There are many different types of consumption of this data that happen. They have different patterns, different expectations for, is this real-time data? Is this need to happen as part of a, a part of, does this consumption happen as part of a sequence? Um, is there some, you know, is there some feedback loop, you know, around this data consumption required? So there's a whole technical side of, you know, how do I deliver this information to be solved for? Um, on top of all of that, you have the ongoing challenge of just keeping up with, you know, data security, keeping up with um, um, uh, technology evolutions, managing a continuously moving environment where all of your vendors are having different releases and upgrades and, and needing to manage, you know, all of that. So, you know, I'd say as an industry, this has become a very complicated environment for them. It's a huge challenge and um, the ability for a firm to do that well or not really moves the meter on their ability to innovate. And so it's, it's, it's you know, it's really a big, it's really a big challenge here in this industry managing this complexity. And can you give us an overview of State Street Alpha Data Platform? Sure, yes. Uh, thank you for asking that question. So um, first thing to know is the Alpha Data Platform was built um, to service all investment management data from front to back. That makes this solution very unique. There's a lot of data solutions that have been built in the market to sort of service components of the sort of front to back ecosystem. Alpha Data Platform was really built uh, or, or the need for Alpha Data Platform really came to the forefront when State Street bought Charles River and this created the unique position in the market where State Street was able to service all front to back data on behalf of clients. It's a huge need for a data platform. So this data platform, Alpha Data Platform, started with this and really, um, focused initially on the needs of the front office. So at the point of origination, at the point of origination of a transaction, of a position, the timeliness concerns, the data quality concerns, the resiliency concerns, all started there. And so that is sort of, you know, very unique um, in terms of like the positioning of the data platform. Um, of course, there are many capabilities that are required inside this platform. Um, data integration capabilities, mastering capabilities, data quality capabilities, data, data distribution capabilities. And so what we do is we provide this stack of capabilities to our clients in a fully managed um, model where a, a lot of that complexity that we talked about um, um, in, in, in the first question is managed by us. This is our business. Dealing with complexity, this is these complexities that are a problem for our clients are a business opportunity for us. And this is what we focus on. So we, we manage these capabilities, we manage these ecosystems and our clients benefit from that. So how is ADP helping clients solve their data management challenges? Um, sure, yeah. So um, if you think back to the problems we um, spoke about in question one, well, all of these problems that our clients experience are really the business opportunity for us. So essentially we've productized um, the Alpha Data platform to solve this problem space for our clients where we manage the ecosystem of providers. We provide all of the various capabilities and, and, and manage the evolution of those capabilities for our clients. So essentially when a client becomes uh, part of the Alpha, Alpha Data platform community, they offload um, a significant um, burden from their, um, from their organization, um, allowing them to focus um, their resources on um, innovation, right? And so it's really kind of a game changer um, in terms of um, that approach. And how can platforms like ADP help investment firms streamline their data ops? Yeah, so one of, one of the things that's very unique about um, State Street Alpha is we provide a fully managed service on top of um, um, on top of all of our capabilities, and so the operational burden 
of um, you know running these systems and 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 managing issues and um, and and evolving kind of the operational process as things change are fully uh, can be fully outsourced to us and managed by our teams. Now there are there are software aspects of that where we're providing really kind of leading edge tools that allow those processes to be managed in a kind of more efficient way. And then there are people aspects of that where, you know, you really need to have subject matter experts in the different zones of this front to back ecosystem across different asset types. And um, what makes us unique is we're able to provide both of those at scale. And so um, our clients benefit greatly um, from that value proposition. And why did you partner with Snowflake to build ADP? Sure. Yeah. Well, Snowflake. You know, this is a this is a really um, exciting um, topic um, in the market. You know, Snowflake has a lot of momentum. Um, we started working with Snowflake in you know what I would consider their early days. It was you know 2018, 2019, well before they went public. And um, and really, what we were trying to solve for um, initially was 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 two things that really have incredible value and 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 remove a lot of complexity um, from our clients' ecosystems. Um, first thing we wanted to solve for is one of the problems all databases have is that when um, when consumers are querying those databases, you have to be concerned about the performance implications of, of actually running those queries. How long is it gonna take for those to be um, executed? But also you have to worry about um, um, different queries colliding with each other and sort of you know impacting production processes. So the first thing that Snowflake does for us is at baseline, it you know pretty much guarantees that you're gonna have excellent performance on any query that's executed without the need to have any DBA involved. No indexing, no partitioning, um, no optimizer modes. Like so like that, you know, from the perspective of a service provider is a huge problem to have solved. Snowflake's a columnar database that separates storage and compute from each other. What that means is you don't have to worry about processes colliding with each other because you can give each process its own dedicated compute and um, it can access a common storage mechanism without interfering with each other. So what has happened over time because of these issues our customers have created many copies of data, resulting in many data quality issues and data integrity concerns. So virtually this problem is eliminated um, with um, our adoption of Snowflake. And so that was just a huge benefit. In addition to that, there were all, so that by itself would really kind of justify, you know, partnering with Snowflake around our platform. But there are so many other benefits. The Snowflake data share allows us to seamlessly share data with our clients and make it available in their target environment without any data integration needing to occur. Um, and that just removes a tremendous amount of friction from the process in terms of getting data from our environment into our clients' environments. Um, another aspect that has proven to be hugely valuable is Snowflake um, operates um, in a hybrid cloud mode. And so we're able to share our data, which you know we use Microsoft Azure as our alpha data platform um, host. We're able to share that data to clients who are using Snowflake on Amazon. Um, and we don't have to do anything um, on our side to make that happen. So that sort of magic of sharing data and removing friction is available across cloud providers. And, um, and that's tremendous value. And, uh, and finally, the Snowflake marketplace where vendors are publishing data sets and everyone's able to benefit from that kind of seamless access to data with low friction. Um, this is really accelerating our ability to uh, build solutions faster and our clients' ability to realize value faster. So all of those reasons um, are, are, are really why we partnered with Snowflake and they've been a great partner to us in terms of you know um, our ability to interact with their product experts and to um, influence their product roadmap, we've also um, been a great go-to-market partner, um, and and um, and so it's uh, it's been a real um, real success story.
And with these fund, uh, foundational capabilities in place, um, what does the future look like? That's a great question. So um, I would kind of think of, you know, the future being in a few different areas. One is um, we have, you know, a robust ecosystem today with really kind of mission critical providers, you know, from, from a market data, from an analytic um, perspective involved in that. We're going to continue to expand, you know, that ecosystem in terms of the number of um, vendors that participate in that and also the variety of capabilities from those vendors that are um, available. So, you know, that's sort of the first thing. The second thing is we're building solutions on top of the Alpha Data platform. And these solutions are going to be seamlessly available within a marketplace to our clients. That makes it very easy for them to consume, you know, these solutions with virtually with low touch or no touch implementations you know, greatly accelerating the time to value um, 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 for um, those clients. Um, the third area and an area that um, I'm very excited about is we've incorporated um, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence in our alpha EDM stack. And, and, and that capability is allowing us to proactively identify data anomalies and have operational teams react to them before downstream consumers are impacted. Um, we're gonna take this a lot further um, and really um, really optimize the way insights are generated off of data. So essentially have the machine bubbling up insights around correlations, um, root cause analysis on um, issues. Um, and further, and probably most excitingly, we're gonna uh, change the way data consumers interact with data. So that like right now there's a lot of, you know, sort of understanding they need to have about, you know, okay, if I wanna do an exposure analysis, I have to know where this data element is and where that data element is and I have to run these queries. Um, we're gonna be looking, we're, we're looking at ways to make this more of a natural language search type capability where uh, a client could just ask, I wanna understand my exposure to, you know, um, equities in uh, Asia specific with um, these criteria, right? So more, um, more of a simplified experience around how users interact with that data. And so those, those are the three areas that will be um, kind of in the bullseye of our focus. Jeff, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we look forward to having you with us very soon. Thank you. Thank you.